I'm hopeful that by now uh, you have been able to uh, arrive at a broad area of interest and you have also arrived at uh, a rather broad, a narrow area of interest on which you may want to carry out your research. One of the things that uh, I understand research teaches is that of observing society. Observing society means observing people, observing firms, uh, observing um, business houses. How do they carry on their activities? And when we begin to observe, we learn a lot about society and its activities. Observation is different from looking at something. Observation is guided. Observation is with a purpose. So I'm sure that you have arrived at something of interest to you and we shall go further. Before we go further, I request you to uh, share the like and share this uh, session with your friends and subscribe to this session. It will be of help to somebody else as well. So today's topic is on writing a research statement or what we call a research problem. So for a first time researcher who has limited knowledge in research, this stage takes quite a lot of time and can also put this researcher into a state of uh, confusion as to what topic should I take up for research. This is very common at this stage, but uh, that's how research is happening. Unless, of course, um, your, somebody has given you a topic for research and said that this is something that you can do. But if it is on your own, you are developing an idea that you want to research, it takes time. You may find it difficult in the beginning to identify a topic of research. Be patient, be calm, and be hopeful that you will find something to do as you go by. So from that broader area now, you need to uh, identify uh, or gather information in the, uh, in the uh, large area of interest. But then now you will now uh, come down to something which is more specific. And uh, you will now spend a lot more time uh, thinking about it and uh, checking out whether you thought about it as a research topic is interesting or you may want to reframe or what you are thinking it, you may want to rethink about uh, thinking it. All these things will happen at this particular stage. But this stage is a very important stage and uh, sometimes a topic may come just like that. Sometimes it may take a long time to arrive at the topic. It depends on how you have been thinking, how you have been focusing on this research that you want to do. So now let me come to what is a research problem. A research problem is a generalized problem. Something that bothers you, something that interests you. For example, when the election results are will be announced on a particular date, why is it that people are so curious to know the result uh, uh, four or five days uh, before that? What makes people think that that result will be the same as the result that will come back after the elections are uh, results are out by the commission, election commission? Why do the people do that? It could be why should, how do uh, people when they migrate to cities, who helps them find a job? Who helps them a uh, place to stay? How do they open bank accounts and a series of uh, questions there. Though uh, they have ventured on to move to a new city, what is that asymmetrical information they have about the city? What is the information they require and how do they do it? You may say that they have a mobile that and because of that mobile they get all the information. But coming into a new city, living in a new place with a new food, without uh, relatives, uh, without the family that they live with, 
how do people cope up with these kind of things so that can be of interest to both economists and sociologists and psychologists how do they do this what kind of uh, situations do they go through and uh, these kind any idea now an idea for example emerged when uh, a, a large number of women were getting into the bus at a particular time in the afternoon and inquiry revealed that they work in a, a garment manufacturing factory so that became an area of interest now garment manufacturing because the manufacturing sector was interesting and then we wanted to understand in that manufacturing sector who works and what kind of work do they do that led to understanding women and their employment positions in the garment factory so we can have topics just emerging or you can take about you know, uh, there are many many topics that you may want to suppose you have you have a village background then you may want to see how in villages uh, crops are uh, being altered now uh, whether the um, families have begun to let the land fallow uh, because their mig their um, uh, the young people have moved out of the city have they uh, invested in buying um, tractors and other assets so that they can get rental income rather than uh, getting the income by selling the crop what kind of non farm activities have uh, uh, the villages started to families of uh, uh, agriculture started taking up in the urban centers what are the issues relating to health uh, how do people uh, take up health issues or what happens to the out of pocket expenses of health and uh, how do they finance that kind of health and what is the consequence of that financing of health on the education of the children in the family and a series of topics can just come in there is no limit to topics that you may find it interesting to carry on your research so that issue is somehow bothering you somehow interesting you something that is you are concerned about something that you want to know more about something that fascinates you any of these things remember in societies there are functional and dysfunctional situations and people so you may understand how some things are working well and you may want to understand why those things are working so well so these kind of situations allow you to think further and these kind of ideas that and uh, i just gave some example they can initiate interest in you to carry out research they can drive you to take up research they can allow you to develop the research design itself so if a problem is identified then you are closer to doing your research if you can identify your research problem well i would say a good part of your research is done because you know what you want to do many many times it is the struggle is not knowing what to do so once this is over then we find that this can drive us to uh, this can en encourage us this can motivate us to carry on our research it can also give an outline of the problem that we want to address so once we write a research problem statement it will give us the broad counters of what we want to research and in the long uh, run in the say, say it can take about 3 uh, to 6 months time it will drive you to prepare your research proposal which is an in very important step in carrying out research once your research proposal is done it is almost half your research work is done because you are now very clear about what you want to do how you want to do and what are the very uh, different dimensions of the research that can be uh, thought about so this is the first step of that now how do you identify research problem as a young researcher or as a researcher who has uh, uh, who wants to take up research the first and foremost thing is personal interest personal interest can come by uh, something that one has been generally reading something that one has been passionate about an idea about uh, animals and um, the bonding with human beings or it could be about um, the uh, urban food that one uh, grows on their terraces there are so many activities that are happening and any of these things can be of personal interest so one thing that can come of personal interest can lead us to understanding this research 
problem. And uh, it could also happen that one explains one's own experience from one's own experience. Uh, one, uh, one uh, let me take that uh, uh, gardening area further. It may mean that a person is uh, uh, experiencing the benefits of doing uh, urban uh, terrace gardening for food crops. Now, if that has happened, the person may get understanding how is it being followed by many people? Do they grow vegetables for their uh, consumption? Have they stopped buying vegetables from outside? What is the economic cost of carrying out these kind of activities? So there can be very many interesting areas that one may look into from one's own personal experience. One can also observe social reality. One can observe why a hospital, a government hospital is kept the way it is, why do, uh, why are these hospitals not functioning into the best of their abilities? What happens to the best of the uh, institutions? Why they don't work well? So what is the cause for this dysfunction and what other solutions that you can think about? And any of these questions that you observe in social reality, they are multi-layered. You cannot explain them with just one uh, uh, issue. There could be so many reasons why something is happening and once we uh, trip on one idea then we start explaining, exploring that idea further. You will find there are so many layers of that uh, area of interest and in that background you will start gathering more information and once you gather more information you will be able to narrow down your area of interest. So and then there are also situations where um, if you are interested in understanding the theoretical aspect of uh, social sciences, you may want to explore the theories and methodologies that are used to carry out research. You may want to understand um, how these assumptions that guide most of the theories in social sciences, how these assumptions can be altered or relaxed. And if we relax those assumptions, will those theories still hold good? Or you may want to test a particular theory in, uh, in real life. So these can also happen. You may also want to read related literature on your area of interest. That can also um, throw up some interesting problem area that you may want to study. There is another interesting area from where research topics uh, or research problems emerge. This is by reading the area of further research in uh, submitted theses in universities. It does not mean by any reason that one goes to the library and picks up some old uh, dissertation work and copy that dissertation work, that is the, the thesis work, that is not what I'm meaning. In the dissertation, in the thesis, there will be one section which talks about areas of further research which that particular researcher could not have studied. So if you explore that area of further research in the area of your interest, that can also give you clues of taking up topics for as a research problem. Uh, so I suggest to you that you could visit uh, libraries and first have a look at the many theses that are stacked up in these libraries because these, uh, uh, these stacked up theses can give you an idea about how a thesis book looks like, how it is the presentation of a thesis book, how is the writing done of a thesis book and what kind of uh, elements are there in a thesis. I have found today that many students, many scholars have not seen uh, another thesis book. They have um, used all the material from the net and they have no imagination about how a research work looks like or how, uh, how a research uh, can be very, uh, seeing good research work can be very motivating. So I suggest that um, you visit the nearest university library and look for them and at the same time uh, Shodh Ganga uh, under the UGC has digitized almost all the research that has been done in the past couple of years in the digital format and therefore in Shodh Ganga you may be able to uh, search for thesis of your interest and maybe get some ideas from there if you are still struggling for a topic of interest. So sometimes, as I just told you, it could be from the personal interest of an individual that a person is interested in 
um, uh, how do uh, let me say uh, how do children um, when children are not going to school and when other children go to school how do they experience that deprivation for example that can be something that somebody would like to study or how is it that uh, you know, college students perceive their education uh, when they find that uh, the jobs that they get are not relating to the subjects that they have studied. There are researches done in these areas probably earlier, but you may be able to identify a new area in that subject itself. So if you find some topic of your interest and you can get specific, it is always better to get specific. Otherwise, it will be a never ending chase for topics. And once you keep chasing for topic this way, you reach dead ends every now and then. And finally, you would have wasted a lot of time doing that. So in the beginning itself, if you listen to this lecture properly, you will understand that you don't need to waste so much time. You can observe this, you can read it, you can discuss this topic with somebody and then find out some topic of interest. And uh, once you have identified some idea in your own personal interest, you may refine it as the time goes by. And along with the refining of this problem statement, you can also uh, start reading, you can also start doing other work that uh, are usually related to work because this particular problem statement will get uh, corrected and reformulated time and time. Over time, you will be doing this. And uh, remember, the topic that you're choosing for interest must hold your, in uh, your interest for a very long time. It can be three years, it can be four years, it can be five years or more. I hope nobody takes it for five years and more, but then uh, it, sometimes we do uh, know that it takes more than that. So it is uh, important here that the topic is of your interest and because it is your interest you will be able to uh, do it faster and you may want to even complete the thesis a uh, good thesis in much shorter time because you are very motivated and you know what exactly you are looking for and remember this thesis that you are doing will determine your career so you have to be uh, reading this particular uh, uh, you must be watching this particular video uh, once or twice and then uh, reflect on what I have been telling so that you will be able to sync along with that and generate ideas. This video is not to be watched as a shortcut to doing research. This is for you to take your time, uh, listen to it, reflect along with it, uh, take down ideas that come to your mind and then move ahead. Now, why is this writing of a research statement useful? First and foremost, this is the foundation of your research. It is the back, uh, is a rock on which you are settling down to do research on. Therefore, this topic, um, this area of uh, identifying your research problem is extremely important. It will be able to help you to reach the understanding of the concepts that are related to your topic. It can allow you to go into the methodologies that are interest, involved in your topic. It can also tell you uh, other uh, related areas that can emerge from this topic. So writing a research problem allows you to go deeper into this area of research. Until you have written a research problem, until you have written it in a statement form, reaching that area of further research becomes difficult. And uh, you can start, uh, you can begin your work now once a research problem has been identified and once you know how to get into that area, you can start actually working with your research um, the problem. And uh, it also, uh, if we don't have a research statement written, it uh, results in very poorly designed research work because it's haphazard, it's not conceptually clear, it's confused in the mind of a researcher and therefore the kind of research that one does can also be very confused and uh, uh, it can be very demotivating because at every stage you will find yourself asking questions and contradicting your own question, not finding answers and so on. So if it is a best idea is to spend time talk to people, discuss with people, um, read, reflect, observe, all of these should be done when you are arriving at your statement of the research 
problem. Another interesting thing that you will happen to you is what should be the title of your thesis. So this title of a thesis cannot come from outside of your thesis. It has to be from somewhere within the thesis. That somewhere is your research problem. You will discover how easily you get your title of your thesis. You, you may moderate the title a little here and there as you go by because um, the, the way you have constructed your title may not be very right. But the theme of your, uh, the title theme of your uh, research will originate from your research problem. And uh, later when you have to write a research abstract, you will find that abstract also originates from this particular statement of the research problem. So a well-written uh, research statement engages the first time reader to read further. So when a thesis is very poorly written, when the statement of the research problem is very poorly written, it puts off the reader to continue reading further. So uh, your thesis will be valued by uh, people who are the professors who will read the thesis and also your thesis will be kept in on online and the thesis will be kept in libraries and the, the scholars who follow you would like to read your thesis. So if you want your thesis to be read, the first thing is write your statement of the research problem well, articulate it well, read and write it well. So now let's move to writing this. Now I, I'm assuming now from a broad area you came to something narrow by various personal experiences and uh, discussions and so on. Now you know why you should write a research statement. Now I'm going to take you to how to write a research statement. Now writing a research statement as I told you it introduces the reader to your research. The way you write your research statement will take the reader to delve into your thesis further. Generally, one or two pages or three pages at the maximum should be enough to write a research problem at the PhD level. So at that level, writing for two or three pages about the problem that you have understood, um, the way you have understood the problem, you can write it in about one or two or three pages. Three pages, two to three pages should be fair enough. And uh, the language uh, should be such that the reader who is still not uh, very familiar with that subject can read. He's an outsider or she's an outsider. That always keep in mind that the person who reads your thesis does not know your subject. So keep it as intelligible to that reader as much as possible. Using high ending jargon words can put off the reader in the first Place. So the very purpose for which you did your research of sharing knowledge with others will get uh, defeated if your research, the statement of the research problem is not well written. So uh, you be clear in that writing, be very precise or concise in your writing and stay focused. You have an idea so stay focused on that idea rather than spreading it all over. So the research problem should be very clear, language is simple, language is concise and it is also focused so that the reader, the first time reader finds interest in continuing the material that you have written. And the uh, you, you, you need to cite some uh, read. By this time, you might have also started uh, reading some uh, literature that is available. And you can now start using uh, elements from that uh, related literature by citing them inside. It gives a lot of authentic uh, authenticity to your argument because your uh, personal uh, statement that you had in mind is also supported by two or three or five other writers. So that means that your topic, though it could have been uh, arrived by your own thinking and observation, but there are others who concur with that idea that you have it. You can take up different sides of that same argument, but that idea itself somebody might have agreed uh, to study earlier. And the style of writing is that of summary. So it is not a piece of interrogative writing. It is a writing in a summary style. So think about all that you know about the topic that you're going to do. Read about whatever you have to write. Cite them and say, therefore, there is a need to understand this uh, research issue further. So that will say that you are now taking the step to uh, reading uh, or raising questions, which is the natural outcome of this process. 
So I hope you have understood this writing the statement. Try it out. It cannot happen in one go. It will and research writing many times that you will be uh, writing over and over again so that you get finally uh, getting something which you feel you are satisfied. A small tip here because most of you are now all of you are using computers for writing your um, documents and keeping them. Uh, please don't forget. Please write the date on which you had typed that particular file. And when you have uh, edited that file, change, save it as a new date on which you are uh, doing it. Because at the end, you will find that you have got so many documents with you and you do not know when it has been written and how it has been written. You can avoid all of that from the beginning when you learn some simple management of your files. So if you have written an article, uh, if you have written a piece or paragraph today in that document, then change the date for today. And the same document, you may work tomorrow on it, change the date for tomorrow. If you're opening a new document, write the topic and the date. Every time you write, please write the date. That gives you uh, a sequence of uh, activities that you have done and the dates on which you have performed this particular task of writing. So the format for writing. Uh, first and foremost, describe an ideal situation of your problem area. An ideal situation would be that um, a, a young person uh, joins uh, college and then that young person, uh, after completing his course, he gets a job to use the knowledge and skills he learned. This is your ideal situation. I'm just giving an example. That's an ideal situation. Now, after this ideal situation, describe how this ideal situation is not currently in vogue. Current situation, it is not so. Current situation, those students who are passing out from college do not get jobs in the area. Most of them do not get jobs in the area of knowledge that they have worked on. So that is the first one is an ideal describing an ideal situation. Second is the description of how it is away from the uh, expected uh, situation. Then the third area should be explain how things should be and when you say how things should be then you will get into area why it is not happening like that what are the causes of this and and a series of topics that will emerge from that you see explain the way you propose to improve that current situation so the first and the second are one is an ideal situation second is a current situation between the ideal and the current situation find out how you're going to improve that situation so when you're going to explain or improve that situation the more you are uh, moving towards it you are reaching towards the goal of your research you are reaching more and more towards writing the objectives of your research so research is a very systematic study and if you follow the systematic way, I'm developing this idea for it. There can be multiple ways of doing this. I'm just telling you what I have been teaching or what I have been advising uh, students when they come to me for support, uh, the way I have been guiding them. This is what I feel has been uh, useful. So I usually tell them, I said, um, what is ideal? What is the current situation? Between the ideal and, for example, women, why should women be penalized because uh, they have to take care of the family in, in terms of the labor market. How do women, uh, ideally what should happen? Ideally something, reality is something. So how do we uh, move from this ideal to the reality? This movement from ideal to reality and from reality to what can be done to improve the uh, dysfunctional situation that we are in. And so once we do that, we will move closer and closer to the goal that we have set in mind in our research so let me give you some tips about uh, writing one of the things that i have found useful and i always advise students is 
keep a notebook or a notepad with you. Do not think that you will uh, remember all the ideas that came into your mind. It doesn't happen that way. Uh, you tend to forget them slowly because other more occupying ideas may come in. You may forget an earlier idea. It is here that a notebook can be of helpful, uh, helpful to you. Though you may use your mobile, you may use your internet, you may use a word file, all that may be there, but have a notebook because it is very instantaneous to write down something and keep. Jot down some ideas that strikes your mind when you see something about it or you're observing something about it because you will forget it. It is easy to forget. And explore new possibilities. So an idea of interest has come to you. So start questioning that idea between the ideal and the current. You will find very many ideas that are emerging. So explore those new possibilities. And uh, uh, I would say that you can avoid those topics which are often done by uh, many scholars. I have seen uh, topics like, uh, you know, they want to study uh, sericulture in one uh, district, then you'll find another uh, research, the same uh, topic about sericulture, about poultry, about um, uh, dairy farming in another district. So wh what really happens is uh, it's it gets, uh, I guess it gets boring for the student, the scholar, because the topic has already been done. And uh, then the very uh, purpose of uh, research is to contribute to uh, knowledge building. What is that new knowledge building? These are two nearby districts. Now, how can one district be so different from another district? So topics which have been often done by others, topic which are, uh, oh, uh, they are over exhausted kind of topics. So look for topics that are, interesting that can be motivating um, now and those uh, for which there is a scope for you to study and when you study that uh, uh, interesting area you will also find that you are contributing something to that subject uh, area but then uh, how unpopular topics should you be taking so when you take very unpopular topics um, as a fresh researcher you may find it difficult to explore into that un, uh, unpopular topic or unknown topic. So too difficult a topic is also not suggested. Too easy a topic is also not suggested. And I like to use this uh, story of this uh, Goldilocks and Teddy uh, and the three bears. I'm sure that most of you would have uh, listened to the story while at school, but that story has a, that, uh, um, uh, story has a lot of meaning even in carrying out research. Uh, I'm sure that you can look for that story on Goldilocks and the three bears. So there is something that is appropriate in research that you do. Something that will be all right just for the little girl and that is that of the little bear. So uh, it's an interesting story. Just read that. You will find what I'm trying to say. There is something called as appropriateness. So what is appropriateness for research? Too hard? No. Too difficult? No. Something that for a fresh topic, something for a fresh researcher, that is what needs to be done. And before uh, uh, finalizing, again, don't take topics of very recent origin because you will find that data on such topics may be very difficult to obtain. So again, those kind of researchers are usually taken up by policy researchers who are experienced in research and they have already known how to take up to, uh, research of unknown type and they carry on. But for a fresh researcher like you, a new researcher like you, not something very difficult, not something very easy because very easy will not challenge you to do research. And before finalizing your theme and writing the research statement, please discuss the topic. Discuss topics with your colleagues, with your friends, with your professors, with your college professors. You might have done some research along with them. Do discuss with them. So when you uh, discuss with your uh, professors, there is something that will definitely come useful to you. And uh, let me end this session by telling you that research statement, the writing of the research statement or statement of the research problem. In these words, it is written, but this 
statement of the research problem is extremely important because it drives you towards the path of carrying out research and the next session we shall look into how to frame research questions so once you reach this stage then the next stage will be dependent on this stage so these are all logically connected as i told you they are scientifically done so the next stage is framing questions so please uh, uh, share this session with other colleagues or friends who are doing research and subscribe to the channel uh, that can make a lot of difference to uh, students who want to carry out research thank you